All right. Hey, Mike, how's it going today? It's going good. How are you doing? Doing good. I like the festive coffee cup. Reminds it me of that time of year. Yeah, it's that time of year. So we're talking about, uh, you mentioned peer-to-peer lending before we started. And, Correct. Okay. And what is that? I know there's, uh, you talked about OPM often, uh, and is this like a new way of referring to other people's money or OPM? It is. It's what's happening out there right now. And it's going to happen more and more. If you're a business owner, if you're a real estate investor, whatever it may be, you're going to find more and more people looking for other sources. We all know what's happening out there with affordability. Banks are starting to charge more. DSCR is now getting into the nines and tens. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Fix and flip loans are getting into the 11s, 12s, and even 13s now. So affordability is tough. Terms are tough, meaning they're giving you less money on these deals. Requirements are tougher for credit scores, all those things. Peer-to-peer is really just working with other people in the community who have just as big a need as you, they're going through the same crunch. Maybe they're in retirement. Maybe they're just needing some extra income and they have some money in their 401k, their IRA, or just in the savings, and they would rather lend it to you. And maybe six, seven, or 8% secured helps you, saves you some money on all those closing costs and everything, and it helps them by getting a better return. So peer-to-peer is just taking out the bank and just working with humans again. Interesting. Yeah. It's like because the institutions are having this difficult, you know, crunch time right now. So rates are not very good in a lot of areas, like you said, looking to just, you know, other people, friends, peers, they, it's a win-win situation because you can get a lower rate than you could from an institution, like a bank by far, and they're going to get a better return than they could get from the bank. Yeah. It's cutting out the middleman, really. (laughs) And terms are flexible. Um, There's no prepayments. Underwriting is more than likely simpler. There's not a lot of closing costs that's, that's involved. I mean, this has been around in, in most really good investors. I always have this this kind of money out there, even though they're, they have been working with DSCR and lenders and banks. They always have a pocket, one or two, peer-to-peer, someone who's lending them money. Because typically, if a deal pops up and you have someone who has money and you've built a reputation with them that you do good work, you know, you could call them and just say, hey, I have a closing this Friday. Guess what? pretty much your underwriting is done. So as things tighten up, as banks get and lenders get a little more strict on what they're doing, this is the perfect time to reintroduce something that's been around there since before banking. Yeah, yeah. It seems like this uh, very, I don't know, like the original banking, right? Like banking is just an outgrowth of the fact that people would lend each other money. And then it was such a useful thing and for human beings and societies that it became institutionalized. Correct. <laughs> and so yeah. now it's like we go back to the basics because the institutions are going through a difficult, you know, period. Is that, yeah. is that? Well, the Fed is making them go through the, um, you know. Right, right. It's the Fed, yeah. You know, they're tightening everything. They're making it hard on them. But it's also just a great time to remember that there's other options out there. There's billions, trillions of dollars in retirement accounts and people's savings, and people are pulling money out of banks because they don't know if the banks are solvent or they're going to stay solvent. So they're looking for something. They want to make a better return. They want something secured. And as long as you do it right, make sure you protect them. It's a great win-win situation for everyone. And any investor out there or business owner should be looking to -to peer-to-peer lending, even if it's just $5,000 to help make the payments or the down payment. It doesn't have to be, you know, a half a million dollar loan, but it can be. That's interesting. A bit too, $3 million loan. There's all kinds of people out there with all kinds of pockets full of money. You just have to find ones that fit what you're needing but I think it's it's time that we reintroduce something that has been around way before banking started. People used to have to rely on other people and family to help them and lend them some money. What do you say to those that, I think I heard this growing up often, is that like, if you borrow from family or friends, like it it over, it complicates the relationship. Like I just remember having this, like maybe, maybe this was a, a, a rumor spread by banks to get us to, yeah. <laughs> to just use them. But like, I always heard this notion, it's just in my head swimming around from growing up that you're complicating the relationship. It's going to make things uncomfortable between you and family members or friends. Like, do you have anything to say to that where it's like, well, you know, the way to say not uncomfortable? Well, number one, making sure you're putting them in good deals. Because if you're not putting them in good deals, yeah, it can become uncomfortable because maybe it's going to go in default. Maybe they're not going to make, you're not going to be able to make payments, all those things. When I talked about peer-to-peer, if it's family, friends, or even people you don't know, it's putting them in good deals, which I mean deals that have a very good chance of cash flowing if it's a rental property. Great chance of being flipped. We see them all the time. We're still seeing them, even in this market, where people are buying properties at 82 or 85% ARV. There's a very good chance they're not going to make money. That's a bad deal to put someone in. 
We also have deals where we're seeing people at 65 or 70 percent and they could cash flow. Those are good deals. So uncomplicating, not making it stressful for your family is making sure you put them in good deals and not gambling. You know, let's just see if it works or not. Makes sense. Yeah. Remind me what ARV is again. Sorry, newbie still. That's right. After repair value. So if something is going to sell for 100000 you want to really be at 70000 and below in this kind of market to make sure you're going to take into account that there may be a slowing. I mean, they're, they're looking at 2024 as being a record for low in the mortgage industry, which means sales are going to go way down. You got to make sure you protect yourself. There's still going to be sales. There's still a shortage of homes. It's just affordability. So ARV is dealing with fix and flips. Fix and flips, even if you're buying a rental. If you're a real estate investor, your goal is to walk into some free equity. So even if you're buying a rental, your idea is to buy that 70 or 75 cents on the dollar. So you have some leeway. What if the market goes down 10%, you're still safe. Goes down 15%, you're still safe. If you're buying it at 100% of what the retail is now, the market goes down 10%, kind of starts freaking some people out. Gotcha. And even some lenders out, Yeah, yeah. what you could do. So we're looking at good deals now and in the future. And the good investors who are doing good deals, there should be no stress on the family. But let's look at it another way. Our company, over the last 23 years, we've done right at or a little bit over a billion dollars in using peer-to-peer other people's money. And the biggest thing is the majority, if not all of it, is not from family and friends. It's from other people out there who are interested in making a good return. So it doesn't have to be family or friends. You don't have to put that stress on because there are people out there who are looking. There are probably more people looking to get a better return now than there are people who are looking for the money. Oh, interesting. Okay. So there's a lot of OPM, other people's money, or peer-to-peer out there right now. Yeah. You you mentioned uh, earlier, like it could be five thousand dollars. Is that is that something that people need to think about? Like when I think about investors, I think of like someone who's just really rich, and they could, they, you know, like you said, they could they could loan out a million dollars. But like, are people missing the fact that there are way more people that could loan out five, ten, fifty k? Is that is that really where people should be looking? Yeah, they should, especially to start out, because it could be your down payment, it could be your carry costs. It could be the fix-up cost. It could be any of those things in the real estate investor world, or it could be your, you know, your startup, your growth money if you're in a business. It does not have to be a half a million. Yes, we've done two and $3 million peer-to-peer loans, but we've done just as many under 100,000 or 20. We're doing one today for 35,000. It does not have to be everything. Lenders out there are getting tighter and tighter. Terms are getting harder. So if they want another 10% down, and you don't have it, where do you go? Maybe you can start looking at peer-to-peer. People out there who are looking to make maybe eight grand on 100,000 instead of five grand, because that extra three grand a year makes a big difference, 250 bucks a month for a lot of people, because their medicine went up, their gas went up, just like everything else, food bills. Everything's gone up in their world too. They're looking for a little bit better return on what they're doing. And if it's secured with real estate, if you do it right, secure with real estate, they're in a good position. Mm, yeah. So it's a good deal when it's done right with real estate. Like they can reasonably expect that they're going to make that money versus like, this is not the same thing as, uh, you know, trying to, you know, reach out to somebody about a, a pyramid scheme or something. Yeah. Like this, it's it's real estate. This is a backed, you know, especially if it's done right. Like you're talking about this. That's very that's likely Im- to succeed. Yeah. That's, that's important. When I say, you know, done right, part of that is making sure they're in good deals but making sure you do the proper paperwork with them. If you want to take some of the fear away from your family and friends, you give them a real note. You give them a real mortgage or deed of trust that's secured on the property. You don't skip quarters because it's still cheaper than you'll find anywhere out there for money because you're not going to pay, you know, the points typically and you're not going to pay the other closing fees and all that stuff. It's going to save you money, but if you do it right, they're going to have more confidence in you. So they're not going to create this drama. You know, I always say, make sure you document it right. Make sure you get the documents. Make sure you secure it. Make sure you put it on the property with a real mortgage or lien. Give them the documents and then, you know, make your payments. And if anything comes up, just be truthful with them. Just like, hey, it's taking a little longer to sell or whatever. The more you don't do it correctly, the more they're going to start having some anxiety. That's where all this stuff comes out. You know, it's it's, it's the same rule. 80% do it right, 20% don't, the 20% mess it up. Yeah, for the 80% 20 rule, right. Yeah. There's a lot of people out there doing it right. And that's what we're talking here is, is hopefully getting to the people who want to do this right. Another point when you're saying about family and friends or whoever, 
I went to this big real estate convention in Oakland, Oakland many years ago, and it was, it was about buying apartment buildings. And he's, he, you know, he divided the room. He goes, here's the truth. I've been doing this for 15, 20 years. And he goes, half the room right now has money, and they're trying to figure out where to invest. The other half doesn't have money, and they're trying to find the money. So you got to start talking to people who go to real estate groups who are interested in real estate because there are a ton of people out there who want to get into real estate, but they don't really want to get into real estate. They just want a better return. Yeah, yeah. So those that have the money, they want to be able to get a better return. And if you don't have the money, then you have an opportunity to do the work on the front end for finding them good deals. And yep. you're, but you get paid in the long run too, yep. right? So it's a good deal for everybody. When All you're doing is replacing a peer, a person with a lender, with a bank or someone else like that who could lend you or maybe or maybe not lend you the money. And I think we need to start looking at being more connected to other people out there who are looking to you know make these kind of moves and create the kind of income for themselves. So you're going to make the money when you flip the property. You're going to make the money maybe holding and getting rent. You're just replacing a peer with a lender or a banker. Gotcha. Okay. And there's a lot of benefits if you're buying right now and you know you want to get into a DSCR role and it's nine or ten percent and then want a three or five year prepay, how about getting a peer to peer loan? Maybe you have a rental in Oklahoma and it's only a hundred grand to get someone to put up the hundred grand maybe at seven percent. So the interest rate's better. It's interest only. There's no prepay. So if rates get better in two years, you could refinance them out and get a better loan and use their money somewhere else. There's a lot of flexibility in it. It's helping you flip, buy rentals do land splits, whatever it is, just do a bridge loan. It's helping them because you're getting the better return. What's a bridge loan? A bridge loan is typically just a temporary loan on a property. It's usually a bridge and a gap. So I have a property that's supposed to be selling. It's not selling, but I want to buy another property. I get to bridge the money that I have in this property over to the new property. So it's a temporary loan. That's already on a property you own. We're doing two right now on rental properties. People own them free and clear. They need some money to do some other things. We're giving them a one-year bridge loan until they could get their business established for a year, until they can get a real I see. mortgage or something. So, so backed by their current, you know, the, the current like uh, rental that they own yep. um, so that they can go out and try to make money on something else right now since that one is not, uh, you know, cash flowing like they want it to. Is that or it's Or maybe something? they have another opportunity. Someone was just asking for a loan and they're like, I have this property. I need a bridge loan really bad because I have an opportunity to buy another business. That business I could buy at such a good number, but I need to do it now. He has a piece of property. I could give him a temporary loan, a bridge loan, because it's not for a fix and flip. It's not for really a rental. It's just until he could buy this property, get everything refinanced because it's time sensitive. And we have another deal for a bridge loan in Texas where they own a property, but they're trying to start a business. So they own a property, they're taking out a loan on this property, their rental, to get their business in Colorado up and running. It just bridges them to some kind of growth, some kind of success, but it's not like a true flip or or rental. It just gets them through or gets them to something else. Okay. So all this makes sense. What are some of the more, can you go into some more detail on, on the benefits of these peer-to-peer loans? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is you're you're getting rid of the rigid underwriter banker. You can get up to 100% financing, or you're not going to get that in today's world as long as it's a good deal again. You're not going to hit these prepays. It's not going to be paperwork, paperwork, keep sending more paperwork, hoping you're going to close another week. We have three to five loans that's been going on six to seven weeks trying to refinance out of one of our loans appraisal after appraisal, this after this, I need some more paperwork. So the right situation, you know, you could get better financing, more financing, less paperwork to actually get approved. Credit score doesn't matter. You could get up to 100% financing, just flexibility. I mean, you're working with someone, they're like, hey, I like that property. I see that it's cash flowing. That's a good investment for me. Let's close it. I have many investors who have peer-to-peer lenders for them. And they'll find a deal on Wednesday and close on Friday because all they do is like, hey, I've got another good deal. They have built up a good rapport with peer-to-peer that they could just call and close something now because people have trusted them because they've done what they've said. That's where it goes back to good properties, being a good steward of those other people's money too. Because if you are, it'll expand. It's so different than like 
having to always prove yourself to like a bank mm -hmm. because if you have proven yourself to a person like oh i know them and it just it feels natural to be like they're gonna get me a good deal because i that they already have three times you know it's amazing how many calls we get from people who are just like hey i just went to my lender to get a fix and flip loan and my credit score is five points too low so can you help me get my credit score up so what happens if you don't have to go through that all the time and like where's my credit score i mean right. as long as you're paying and, and doing all this stuff. So your credit score goes down five or 10 points. It's not going to kill your next deal. That's the beauty of working peer to peer. You have to start the process. You have to do it right. You have to come up with a, a good package and show them. And like I said, then do it right. People try to get too cheap on it. Like, hey, I'm lending you money. I don't really want to go through title because they're going to charge me some money. I don't want to go through this because it's going to cost me some money. I don't want to re really record a deed because it's going to cost you money. The truth is all of those things are going to happen if you use a bank, a lender, but they're going to charge you other costs and points. Yeah, and the interest is going to be higher. Yeah, right? the interest <laughs> is going to be higher. So why not take the time, do it right for the other person? Because what that does in the future, maybe they could fund something before you have to record it, or maybe they'll you know back fund when you need some money for a fix up. The better you make them feel up front on your first few deals, the easier it's going to get with them, or maybe they'll start bringing in friends and you could do more. So don't be cheap. Don't try to cut every quarter when you're doing this. Treat them like a real lender and secure their money as if it was a real lender, making sure the right documents are done and everything in. And then it's that win-win situation because who cares where my credit score is? Who cares when I need to get this closed? If they have the money, they're going to close it. They're going to wire it. It's not like always these delays. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. I put myself in the in the nice nice space in my head of being a, a wealthy person, or not, maybe not even wealthy, right? Just I have this extra money mm -hmm. that I want to invest to get a good return. When I think about somebody going through the you know the steps to make sure I have title and deed and all these things that you know that just make it more official, and I can look at the documentation and feel very solid about my investment. Like, of course, I'm going to be more you know inclined to loan that money. That makes yeah. That yeah, really instead makes of sense. like, hey, just wire me some money. Yeah, yeah. You know, wire me a hundred grand. Yeah. My oh, really? Uncle Joe, can you send me some, you know, five grand? I need some help. I'm like, oh, no, yeah. no, Uncle Joe, yeah. no way. <laughs> that's that's too many people kind of try to skip those steps. Like, hey, just send me a hundred grand. It's all good. Mm -hmm. And then that's like, is it really good? You know, like when they start having doubt in their mind, the people who are lending you money, you start breaking that bridge down. You're trying to build a bridge to get them to fund the next deal and the next deal and then bring in some friends to even fund more deals. And when I say bring in friends, I want to make sure I'm clear that you don't co-mingle people, which means you don't put five or six people into one note. You have to do them separately unless you want to go and get involved in the SEC and all that other stuff. So just want to make sure when we're talking peer-to-peer, -peer, I'm not talking about pooling money and doing all that stuff because that, that's another. But I have to put that out there because I know people will be like, can I do this? And you told me I could do this and I don't, right, right. don't want to get there. So, so you're not talking about pooling money. You're talking about individual loans. And if you want to do more than one, you need to do all of this for each one of those. Correct. You got it. Yep. And not putting like 10 people into one note, into one deed, unless you go through the registration and do all that stuff. So we want to keep it simple. We want to find the people who fit what you need. Because not everyone, like we said before, needs 500 grand or 200 grand. They just need 50 grand, 35 grand to get their business going. And they have a, some real estate. And maybe their income is not what a bank wants. Most well, these people don't care what the income is as long as the property looks like it's going to protect their money. And you could pay them. It's interesting. It's kind of like a, a personal, from what I understand from our other, you know, conversations, it's like a personal DSCR where you said DSCR doesn't care about your income. Yep. DSCR is just about rents and expenses. Like, you know, is is it going to cash flow? And if it is, if you can prove that, then they're going to loan you money. The thing is, is that even DSCR now has higher rates than it used to. So it's the same principle with people usually, right? Yep. If they can see if, if beyond a reasonable doubt it's going to cash flow people will be apt to, you know, want to loan you money because they're going to get a good return. Exactly. They're looking at it like, I could put it over here, we said this before, and make eight grand on 100,000 instead of four or five grand over here. Bank's going to maybe pay them probably five in this market, but maybe in some it's four. So they could double what they're making. It's amazing how many people we right. talk to because we work a lot in the peer-to-peer -peer of the OPM market. That's what we've been doing since 08 is how many people call us and just say, this money is so important to us. The people who are you know, lending the money. We have people who would get a few hundred bucks to a thousand bucks a month. We got people who get 50 or 60 grand a month from interest. Just depends on the size. But it's so important to them 
because it's steady. The stock market's going up and down. They're kind of freaking out. Banks, a few of them close. People start pulling money out of CDs and banks and everything because it's only protected to so much. So what do they do with their money? But they still have to live. They still have to pay their bills. What do they do? Yeah. All I'm saying is there's people out there who want to do this as much as the investor or the business owner wants them. You just got to make them feel good about what you're doing. Nice package. Put it together. Here's the property. Here's what it looks like. Here's the rent. Here's what I've done, like a portfolio. And okay, yeah, like in like here's how we're going to secure your property. Like if you go in with a nice little presentation online or whatever, and like here's like the property. Here's what we're going to do. Here's what the outcome is. We're renting it. We're keeping it. Here's the documents. We're going to make sure there's a note. There's a deed. Like if you come in professional, easy to do. You you probably have to talk to a lot less of the peer-to-peer people if you come in professional and do it right instead of just come in and say, go on, I need 50 grand, just give it to me, just wire it to me. You know, like, yeah, that's not going to work. Yeah. Typically never <laughs> that work, but it is a time where things are tightening, people have to look, but there's going to be some great opportunities out there. These great opportunities mean whoever's prepared, who's ready, and who has the money is going to succeed, you know, over the next year, maybe year and a half until things lighten up and then there'll be some more options out there too. Fantastic. I mean, that that makes a lot of sense to me. If someone wants to get started with this, but doesn't really know how, I mean, everything you're saying sounds good, but they're like, okay, what are my next steps? Do you work with people like that? Help them just go to, you know, go the next step. Yeah. I mean, we've been, you know, we had to do this back in 2008. So we've developed both on the borrowing side and the lending side. So both, both sides of it. So we do have a picture, a clear of how do you do it if you're a lender and how do you do it if you're a borrower to make those things work. So Yes, if someone is looking to create this and needs to know where to start, what are the actual items you need to do? That is something that we are helping people with because we want to make sure this market grows, that we get rid of some of the lenders and bankers out there and put more money into the people's accounts. So if you're looking to borrow the money, yes, we can help you put together exactly what you do, how you do it, how you present it. If you need someone to help talk you through or with someone, we could do that too. It's just, you know, we coach people through that. Oh, I see. On the other side too, if you're blending the money, how do you set it up so you're secured as much as you can be? Like, how do you maximize your security and your return and make it work for both people? We have uniqueness in that we've done both thousands of transactions. Doing this on rate being right in the middle, being someone who transacts and, and keeps the, the loans flowing on both sides. So someone who's out there who wants to build this, that's what we're here for. We're going to help you coach if you're looking to borrow it or if you're lending it, or if it's just someone who's like, hey, I'm a borrower. I have the lender. I just need to know how to put this together really quick. So we all feel comfortable. That's what we could do. Gotcha. So you consult with with both sides. So everything you were saying about making sure you have a good presentation, that you're willing to do the title and deed, like just have, you know, dotting your I's and crossing your T's, making sure that it looks good to a potential peer-to-peer investor. You can work with them. And also you can work with the peop- the, the investors too and say, you know, what, uh, what do you need to be looking for in a deal to make sure this is secure? Yep. Because the, the bigger this grows, the better it grows, the more options people have. It, it works on both sides because, you know, right now this lender maybe is out there, has their money in a bank at 4 or 5% and the bank's lending at a 10%. So who benefits? Just the banker. It's not that person or the borrower. We're just saying like, let's create something that's a little bit closer that gives the borrower a little bit better rate, does less cost, better rate, and gives the person who's lending the money a better return too. But let's make it secure. Let's make let's do it right. Let's work with the people who are not trying to take someone's money or not care if the property is a good property or, or if it's a good business to put stuff in. We want to be able to create an environment with through coaching and you know networking to make sure that both are in a good situation. There's never a 100% guarantee, but in a good situation to get all your money back, get all your interest, and make some profits. So you're you're there to help both sides of the peer-to-peer and make sure that it is win-win. Correct. That's what our target is, is to make sure it's win-win, get better returns. Our thing is cash flow. So yes, we do private loans. Yes, we do DSCR. But for us to be really cash flow, it's about everything that's out there that we could offer people to get more money in their pockets. 
this is a situation where it gets more money in both people's pockets. Well, where can people go if they're listening to this and they're saying, yeah, absolutely, I want to learn more? They can just go to our website, thecashflowcompany.com. Just go to contact us, set up a time, be glad to just walk you through and see what we can do. We're also going to start putting some packages out there. If people just want to download it, hey, what are all the checklists that I have to do? What's the package I really need to present to a lender? Or if you're lending, what are the things I should make sure I have it if they don't, they just want some information out there. So they could just go to the cashflowcompany.com, either talk to us or just get some information there that could either put them in a better situation to be a borrower, where to find the people that are lending, what to do when you talk to the people who are lending, or if it's like, hey, Mike, I want you to help me by talking to these people. I have them all set up. They just need to feel good. Lastly, if you already have someone, they just need a little bit of help. Sometimes it's just good to have a third party in between. We have title always in between closing and making sure docs and money is sent. The same thing with us, a borrower and a lender with someone in the middle who's you know looking out for both of them could help get a, a deal done a lot faster. Excellent. So the cashflowcompany.com. I didn't mention one uh, a site at a different time, but the note shop, is that something that people can look at as well? Yeah. 2008, when we started this, we were under the note shop and it's the notechop.com. And that's where we have information out there for if you're a lender and what to look for. What's the warning signs? What's the good? What's the bad? Because like anything, you just got to know everything about a note and lending to make sure you put yourself in the best position you can to get the lowest risk with the best return. Right. Well, thanks. It's, uh, it's always good talking to you, Mike. Yep. Good to learn about peer-to-peer and uh, version of OPM today. Sounds good. Thanks, Michael.